What's going on, everyone? Chris from PickDogs.com here with the wraparound. We're going to be breaking down the NHL action for you going down on Friday, December 29th, 2023. But before we get into that action, if you haven't already, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Just past 100 million views here on our YouTube channel and could not have done that without your guys' love and support. So thank you so much for that. Love, love all the, the uh, love and support that we've gotten for the wraparound as well. Again, I appreciate you guys. You're the ones that we do this for. So keep smashing that like button. We're going to keep doing it, hitting it harder than anyone else out there, especially on YouTube. So definitely, uh, you know, keep, keep, keep that up. But uh, if you're looking for my best bets on the board, make sure you head to pickdogs.com. Click the premium picks tab at the top of the page. We'll get you sorted there. Going to have lots of action on the board on Friday. Some college hoops. Love some of the NHL on the board today. We're going to have some NHL plays up there as well. Um, NBA. I can't remember if I said college hoops. I think I said college hoops. Like it's it's a blur for me at this point. We're heading into a loaded weekend, so bear with me. But uh, you know what? Doesn't change. You know these videos from coming out. The schedule doesn't wait for me, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it wait any longer. Nine game card on uh, on Friday. You know the drill. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get into it. Our first game on the board takes us to the Nationwide Arena, where the Columbus Blue Jackets face the Toronto Maple Leafs once again. The third time this season, these two teams will have squared off. The first meeting was that back and forth game, that uh, a game where Columbus led five nothing. Toronto fought back to make it five five before Columbus won in overtime. And then in the rematch, just before the Christmas break, Toronto got revenge in Columbus by a final count of four to one. So it's sort of like which which kind of game plan or which, how, which kind of script are you going to see here? And I lean to more towards the first meeting where we do have a, a bunch of goals in this one. Um, right now, I just I can't get a good feel for this Toronto Maple Leafs defense or lack thereof. I mean, they gave up four to Ottawa, nine to Buffalo, five to uh, to the Rangers, and they've been giving up goals left and right. They'll always they'll have the, the occasional good performance like they did against Columbus, and they'll be able to shut out Pittsburgh. But I think I'm leaning towards more. The Maple Leafs have some defensive issues right now, and the Columbus Blue Jackets. Well. This is a Blue Jackets team that's, that is, it's not a fluke. They're one of the worst teams in the NHL. The goaltending situation in Columbus is a mess. I think we got goals coming in bunches in this one, taking the over six and a half to kick things off. Next, we head to the Little Caesars Arena where the Detroit Red Wings take on the Nashville Predators and two teams that could really use a win right now. Um, I would say more so the Detroit Red Wings. As, you know, the Nashville Predators, they were on a nice run. They're still 6-4 and four in their last 10, but they have dropped back-to-back -back home games, which is a little bit alarming for Nashville considering that's where they played their best hockey this season. And Detroit, well, they've fallen flat. I mean, they're 2-8 and eight in their last 10 games. The cold streak goes well before that. But that's why I'm going with the Predators here. I mean, you know, the, the both teams have fallen on hard times, but it's only recently that, that Nashville's fallen on hard times. And they still have a winning record on the road this season. Detroit, it used to be that at least they could win their games at home. It would really struggle on the road. Right now, it just feels like they're struggling wherever they're playing. Goal scoring has once again been an issue for Detroit. And uh, Nashville, you know, they got the upper hand the last time these two teams met in March of, of last, uh, of, of, I should say, last season. Um, but I think they get the the, uh, the win in the first game this season, the first meeting. So give me Nashville here at the more favorable price. Like I said, they're just playing the better hockey right now. Now we head to the Amarant Bank Arena where the Florida Panthers take on the New York Rangers in what could be a potential playoff preview. We both these teams playing some solid hockey right now. The Rangers, one of the best records in the NHL in Florida, not far off. And Florida, 10-5 and at home this season. So that sort of makes sense as to why they're favored at home. They just they beat the Vegas Golden Knights before the break, went on the road and beat Tampa Bay coming out of the break. But we're getting plus money with a Rangers team that's arguably one of the best in the NHL on the road this season at 12-4-1. They've won back-to-back -back games in 5-6. of six. They absolutely beat up on the Washington Capitals coming out of the break. And like I said, I just see these two teams as, you know, mirror equals. I actually think I favor the Rangers a little bit in goaltending, in, in you know, just, you know, the on-ice product from forwards to defense. So I think the Rangers, like I said, I think they're the better team. We're getting the better team in a favorable spot where they played some of their best hockey at plus money. Sign me up. Give me the New York Rangers at plus 105. Now we head to the Canadian Tire Center where the Ottawa Senators take on the New Jersey Devils. And it took a little while for it to kick in, but the Ottawa Senators finally feeling the new coach rub. They got rid of DJ Smith a few games ago, uh, just before the, uh, the, the, uh, the Arizona game back on December 19th. Lost their first two road games coming out of it, but then 
got home, beat the Pittsburgh Penguins, then got some momentum, went into Toronto coming out of the Christmas break, and uh, got a nice 4-2 win there. And I think they could have some success at home in this one as well. The Ottawa Senators, like I've said before, if you've followed the wraparound or you know, even in, in our NHL videos going back to last year, the Ottawa Senators were a team, a young team, that played their best hockey at home. And uh, it sort of carried over into this season. Right now, they're a 500 team at home. New Jersey Devils, 10-5 and five on the road. But the Devils have some goaltending issues. You know, they're, they're inconsistent between the pipes. Fully capable of giving four or five, six goals up a night. So, I'm going to take my shot here. I think that if, if the Devils were really going to be that much better and win this game, they'd be a lot more than a minus 115 favorite given their road form this season and given the struggles that the Sens have had. So, give me Ottawa here at minus 105. Now we head to the UBS Arena where we see the New York Islanders take on the Washington Capitals in a Metro Division rivalry. And the New York Islanders, they were sort of adapting to that new play style that they had you know, been, been uh, sort of formatting themselves towards. I mentioned it in my previous wraparounds where now it's gone from a defensive-minded game to a higher scoring kind of game. But lately, it's been sort of the reverse for the Islanders. They've gone back to struggling to score. But the problem is the defense hasn't reverted. They've still been giving up goals in bunches. So it's, it's a bit of a struggle for the Islanders who have scored three goals or less in, uh, in four of their last five. But now they're up against a Washington team that's been playing some low-scoring games themselves. Six straight games with six goals or less for the Caps. Five of those have seen five goals or less. And head-to-head -head between these two teams, the under 4-1 and one in the last five meetings. I think we're headed for a bit of a lower scoring game here, a first to three wins kind of game. These two teams normally play physical, low scoring battles, kind of grind it out hockey. I think that's what we've got going here as well. So give me the under five and a half Islanders caps. Now we head to the American Airlines Center where the Dallas Stars take on the Chicago Blackhawks. The Stars, the biggest favorite on the board on the Friday's card but for good reason I mean sure the Chicago Blackhawks they got a win over the Winnipeg Jets last time out but this has been a team that's been struggling they've still lost six of their last eight games over the last three weeks and um, a lot of those have been on the puck line the Dallas Stars they played a lot of close games they've actually played six straight one goal games so I think there could be some value here if you're if you, or at least one would think there would be some value here if maybe the Blackhawks plus the one and a half goals, but a lot of those teams, if not all those teams, are better than what Chicago's putting out right now. St. Louis, Nashville, Vancouver, even Seattle, Ottawa, and St. Louis again. So I, I just think that, you know, the, the Dallas Stars are just a far better team here. I think, once again, a lack of goal scoring is going to hurt the Chicago Blackhawks, as even in the, in the win against Winnipeg, they only scored two goals. So I'm going to go with the Dallas Stars here, plus a goal and a half. Not a game I'm rushing to the window to bet on... Uh, on Friday's card, but still think that the uh, the Stars get the job done here. Our next game takes us to the Enterprise Center, where the St. Louis Blues take on the Colorado Avalanche. And, um, you know, the Colorado Avalanche, I could understand why they're favored. I mean, you know, they are 21-11-3 this season, respectable on the road, but they're still 7-7-3 seven, seven, on the road this season, a 7-10 and 10 record, obviously, when you combine the, uh, the regulation overtime losses. And the Colorado Avalanche have actually lost six straight road games uh, going back to the end of November. I'm sure that the Avs would like some revenge on the St. Louis Blues, who beat them 8-2 to two in Colorado back on November 11th, the last time these two teams squared off. But St. Louis is playing some solid hockey right now. They've won four straight at home. They've won three straight overall in five of their last six. Maybe it's a trappy line trying to you know pull me into taking the Blues here. But hey, you don't have to pull me too hard. I'll, I'll go with you. I'm going to take the St. Louis Blues on the money line in this one. Next, we head to the Honda Center where the Anaheim Ducks take on the Arizona Coyotes. And, um, you know, I, I want to get there with the, with the Anaheim Ducks as a home dog considering they just beat the Vegas Golden Knights and they've won three of their last five games. But it's still the Anaheim Ducks for me. They're still, you know, the goaltending continues to be an issue. The goal scoring continues to be an issue more often than not for the Anaheim Ducks. And now they take on an Arizona team that's won three, excuse me, five of their last six games. And all against teams that are sort of on the same level as Anaheim. You know, they, they only had one uh, one road win in those six games. They also lost at home to the Colorado Avalanche. But they started the, the, the post-Christmas break schedule with a win over Colorado. Arizona did. They also beat Ottawa, Buffalo, and San Jose. I just think for, you know, getting a reasonable price with the much better team that's played the much better hockey this season. Sure, Arizona 6-11 and on the road. Anaheim 6-12 and at home. 
but I still think the Coyotes are just playing the better hockey. So I'm going to take the Arizona Coyotes in this one, minus 134. And our final game on Friday's card takes us to Climate Pledge Arena, where the Seattle Kraken host the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, the Flyers do come into this one on the second half of a back-to-back, but they looked really good against the Vancouver Canucks on uh, on Thursday. Samuel Urson looked really good, and, and uh, we saw a little bit of Carter Hart in there as well. Now, that could mean that we do see you know some tired legs here in between the pipes for the Philadelphia Flyers, but... I still think that they're the better team playing better hockey, and especially on the road. They're 11-4-3 straight up, 16-2 and two on the puck line on the road this season. Um, well, that's an, I don't know how sustainable that is, but you're still looking at a Seattle Kraken team on the other side that has still not played their best hockey at home. And this is going back to last year, even when the Kraken made the playoffs. Um, like I said, it's sim- simple for me. You know, the Flyers are the better, like I said, better team playing better hockey, Um no reason to step in front of them, in my opinion, even with you know a back-to-back. The trip from Vancouver to Seattle, not a long one here. So give me the Philadelphia Flyers at plus money to round things out. That's it. That's all the NHL action for Friday, December 29th, 2023. But if you like this content, make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe to our channel. And also make sure you hit that notification bell in the description of this video below to make sure you get notified when all the newest and freshest content drops here at Pick Dogs. If you were looking for my best bets, again, remember you can find those at PickDogs.com by clicking the Premium Picks tab at the top of the page. And don't forget to let me know your NHL picks in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Good luck.